time for the 2016 Indiana High School State Bowling Finals. To kick things off, let's meet our competitors. First on the girls' side, the number four seed from the Hoosier Conference, Huntington North. And they'll be facing off against our number one seed from the Michiana Central Conference, Elkhart Memorial. <laughs> On the boys' side, the number two seed from the Blue Chip South Conference, Jasper. our number one seed from the Mid-Indiana Conference, Newcastle. <laughs> All right, we got our competitors ready to go. Let's get some practice started and kick things off. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Gilmore and welcome to Mike Albee's Arrowhead Bowl for the 2016 Indiana High School Bowling State Finals. It's team competition. We're down to our final two teams from both the boys and the girls and everything's on the line, including this, a state championship. Joining me this afternoon is author, instructor, and assistant coach at Purdue, Doug Weeman. And Doug, we saw the singles title this morning take place, but now we have team competition. It's all Baker games. The pressure's on the line. Who steps up? To win it all tonight. Well, there's only four frames for bowling. It's a very fast format, so whatever team can assert themselves right away with confidence can really set the tone for the rest of the match. And as you say, it's a very quick competition as each player only gets two shots during the competition. So what's your keys to who's going to really succeed today and come away with a state championship? Well, you've got to stay very, very loose, and you have to make confident shots right from the start. You make confident sh shots, then everything loosens up, and you can really assert yourself and take advantage. Well, in just a, few, for a, sh a short few minutes, we're going to find out our boys' state champion and our girls' state champion right after this. Okay, welcome back here for the 2016 Indiana High School Bowling State Finals. Team titles on the line. Scott Gilmore here again with Doug Weedman. And uh, Colin Kirshner will be lane side taking care of on lane interviews and some on lane analysis for us during this competition. But what a day we've had here. We've had some great competition. We saw some extraordinary bowling in the singles titles this morning. But now we're down to the team event for both the boys and the girls where we are in Baker format. And Doug, explain to the viewers that maybe aren't quite familiar with what Baker format is. Well, with Baker format, uh, basically all five players are going to share one game. The coach will decide the lineup from one through five, and those players will bowl one with frames one through five. Then the lineup will repeat again for frames six through ten. So you're only bowling two frames a game. And so what makes Baker such a true team is that one player cannot dominate. Um, all five players have got to get lined up if you want to put up respectable scores. And so it's a true team format. Yes, it is. And our finals for the boys here, our number one seed, the Newcastle uh, gentleman from Newcastle High School. And then our uh, their, com their, their team they're bowling against is the boys from Jasper High School. So it's Newcastle versus Jasper on the boys' side. And on the girls' side, it's Elkhart Memorial, your number one seed. They'll be taking on the Huntington North girls as well. So two-game total pin match for each uh, team. And uh, so basically they'll be bowling one game on each lane and whoever has the highest two-game total will be crowned our 2016 Indiana High School Bowling State Champion. I think at this point, you know, the, the, both of these, uh, all four of these teams should really take a lesson from what happened in our singles event. 
uh, the players that really kept the ball in play and the spare shooting was outstanding. And so we had a lot of very close matches. And I think if we, I think if we have that same situation here where players are keeping the ball in play, and giving themselves makeable spares, I think we're gonna have a lot of very close matches potentially. All right, let's thank some of our sponsors here this afternoon for the Indiana High School Bowling State Finals. Trophy House, your awards and recognition specialist, is very proud to be the supplier of the Indiana High School bowling program since its beginning. The Trophy House, located in Indianapolis, has a friendly and knowledgeable staff that are happy to assist you with all of your awards needs. They specialize in laser and computer engraving, as well as beautiful full-color printing process on plaques, badges, nameplates, and many other items. Stop by their showroom on the Indy South Side at 5048 Madison Avenue, or look them up on the web at thetrophyhouse.com. Special price considerations for youth groups and nonprofit organizations. Trophy House, Indy Awards and Recognition Specialists, providing quality products for all sports and occasions. We also want to thank GMAC Graphics, as they can help you or your team looking best or striking with a wide variety of personalized or customized bowling apparel, towels, bags, and more. Even if you don't yet bowl like a pro, GMAC Graphics can easily help you look like one. Call or stop by for more information. Located in Anderson, just a few blocks down the road from Championship Lanes. And who do you know that does laundry? Oh, yeah, every household does at some point. Soapy Joe's is where to go to turn for loads of laundry into loads of cash for your group or organization fundraiser. Get the best clean and earn the most green by having your group sign up to do a Soapy Joe's detergent fundraiser today. Earn up to $15 for every single five-gallon bucket sold. See IHSB Representative Kathy Sumner to receive more information or sign up online at gmacfundraiser.com. That's G-M-A-C-K fundraiser.com. And we want to thank those sponsors, and we have quite a few more to go over here this afternoon during this competition. But, uh, you know, with their help, uh, we're able to put this wonderful live stream broadcast on. And, Doug, the pattern today has been pretty tricky, it seemed like, for the most part. We had talked about the length, which is 41 feet, but we really talked about the volume of oil, which was only 21 mils, um, or well, 23 tw mils. Yeah, 23 mils is, is very thin, so because it is a stack, sort of a Christmas tree, if you've got a lot of oil, or relatively large amounts of oil in the middle, that leaves a very thin taper as you get to the end of the pattern as you get outside. Um, looking at the Christmas tree, there's a bit of a, a, a longer area. Um, there's an extension from about 12 feet, 15 feet, out to about 22, and that's right in that 12 board area. So I think we're gonna see a lot of players playing in that area, especially the, the boys who may have a little bit of a bigger hand. Uh, they may be able to get into about third arrow, and, and the range finders here, um, these are Brunswick lanes, so we have range finders down the lane, looking to see the break point just inside the last range finder to get that angle to the pocket. I think if they get it, leak it out further than that, the ball is going to burn up on the thinner pattern, and it's just not gonna make that recovery. Old National Insurance is a proud partner with the Indiana Bowling Association. Old National Insurance delivers a wide range of expertise and commitment to personalized service. With benefits, consultants conveniently located throughout Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky, we deliver the products and services that their clients need and want. They are a strong industry leader and ranked by Business Insurance Magazine as a top 100 insurance agent and the 10th largest bank affiliated insurance agency in the United States. They are the people you know and a name you can trust for all of your business, personal, and employee benefit insurance needs. To learn more, contact Doug Dreher at 812-478-6044 or visit oldnationalins.com. All right, we're going to be... We better uh, establish with the viewers here just how frenetic of a pace this is going to be because we're going to we're going to show both the boys and the girls at the same time. Yes. So so basically it's going to be what we call rapid fire as we're going to have a boy bull on one lane and a girl bull on the next, and we're just going to go right back and forth. So it's going to be a qu very quick and very fast-paced broadcast. We're going to do the best we can to bring you all the action and, keep and up commentary. With all the names. Keep Absolutely. Up. We're going to have to try to learn names here on a rather quick basis. And, uh, and really I had to learn some names pronunciation because I just don't want to mispronounce anybody. But... Um, we have a lot to go over, and so bear with us. We're going to do the best we can, but one thing we know, you got a crystal clear picture of what's going on right now here at uh, Mike Albee's Arrowhead Bowl, and what a beautiful facility here they have in Lafayette. Well, Mike Albee um, you know, has been for years, this center has been one of the premier centers in the state. It's a beautiful place to bowl at. They have great amenities and just a fabulous place to host tournaments. They have been the host of our own who's our Boilermaker Classic. Watch it there. <laughs> sorry, watch it. I almost, sorry, I almost tripped. Uh, 
but going on about nine, ten years, and uh, our event has been very, very successful. People love to go here. Lots of room, lots of amenities, and so just beautifully maintained. Well, and we want to thank Scott Devers and his staff because it's got Mike Albee's name in, but Scott Devers is the driving force behind Mike Albee's Arrowhead Bowl, and uh, Scott Devers and his staff have done a phenomenal job hosting. I mean, if you could really see where we're at, we, we won't have a camera on us during the broadcast, but we they have built this high-rise, so to speak, uh, platform for us to sit on, and we're way above the lanes. we got a beautiful view of what's going on here, and uh, we're really excited to find out. I feel like I'm in the tower at the Masters or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Looking down, yeah. great view of the bowlers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and... Uh, Scott Devers has been a really important force in high school bowling in general for many years. Um, has really been a great supporter, um, great administrator for high school bowling for all the years that high school bowling has been held in Indiana. We're yeah. winding down to last half minute or so of practice. We're gonna get started very soon here. All right, Scott Savage, our cameraman here to my left, has notified us that uh, Newcastle will start their match on lane three. We're gonna find out between the girls and the boys uh, who will start their match on the girls, if they, who will start on lane seven. Whoever starts on lane seven, the girls will start the match uh, and start the TV show. And once we get practice done, their, their players are warming up. So we're trying to fill with whatever information we can. Uh, one thing I like to look at, Doug, is I like to look at, uh, I like to, to look, hold on, we're gonna find out here. Uh, Okay, so we're gonna have Huntington North start the match on lane seven. And quickly, we're gonna go lane side with Colin Kirshner with some coaches interviews down on lane side. Take it away, Colin. All right, so I got our coaches here on our boys side, uh, just getting ready. First of all, uh, you guys coming in hot off that last match. How do you keep the momentum going into this big match here? Yeah, that's something we've been saying all day. We need to execute, pick up our spares and have fun. Okay, and you got a lineup for us to start off? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna go with Patrick first, T uh, Tyler Richardson second. And then we're going to use uh, Andrew Gatledge and Nolan Kiefer, and then Alec Ernie's going to be our fifth guy. Awesome. Good luck. And, Coach, quite the opposite. Now, you guys, number one seed, you've been sitting for a while. How do you get them ready to go? Well, they uh, they just have to be ready, and I think they are ready. Uh, they, they've been excited about this day all week. Good. And, and your lineup for us to start off? Uh, got the, uh, well, I forgot, old <laughs> Patrick Dalton, uh, number one, and then uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have wrote down here. Well, all that matters is they all make their spares, right? Zach Jordan, or Zach uh, Reinberger, and uh, uh, Cole Owens is third, and Wes Holcomb is fourth, and uh, uh, Daniel Miller is fifth, and Chris Carter is sixth. All right. Well, good luck, both of you. Good luck out there. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. As we kind of put the coach for Newcastle, uh, Ron, Ron Reagan, on the spot there. And uh, we're going to go ahead now, send it right back down lane side to Colin. He's got the coaches for both Elkhart Memorial and Huntington. Right, take now, it away, Colin. Now we got our girls' coaches down here. Coach Huntington, you guys have run the ladder, starting the four seed all the way up. Uh, how do you keep that going here into the final match? Just keep strong and stay practicing and stay loose. And do you have a lineup for us to get started off? Yes. Uh, Rachel Fields, uh, Kylie Kaiser, uh, Liz Manis, Alexis Aldred, and Mackenzie Farrell. Good stuff. Good luck. And, Coach, you guys have been getting prepared, ready to go. What do you tell them to get them geared up and get started? We just try to calm them down, get them relaxed, and make spares. Awesome. And the lineup for us? It'll be Gina Woodward, uh, Taya Turner, Trina Woodward, Tori Smith, and Brooklyn Stokes. Awesome. Well, good luck to both of you. All right, All right guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Colin. And uh, we're just about ready to start, and uh, we need to make sure that Huntington starts this TV show on lane seven. And I believe uh, Newcastle is on lane three. They'll be the first boys team to start their match. All right. Doug, are you ready? We're ready. We have anything like the singles. We're going for a couple of very exciting matches here. We got a raucous crowd. Both Newcastle and Jasper's crowds for the boys' side have been loud all day. Yeah, and the girls have been, <laughs> the girls especially have been very, very loud. So we've got the support. Got two good teams on both sides, both the ladies and the guys' side. 
And uh, of course, we heard the girls' lineups, but we didn't quite get everything right away. So bear with us as we uh, uh, bear with us as we proceed here, and we'll try to get the lanes. So leading off for uh, Huntington will be Rachel Fields. She's going to bowl first on lane seven. And it looks like Newcastle will lead off with Patrick Dalton. And here's the first shot of team competition. Close, not bad. And Rachel Fields comes in light, leaves just the two pin. And now quickly, here we go on the left lane on three with the boys competition. Dalton comes in, Patrick Dalton comes in a little high, leaves just the 10 pin. Probably just a little tighter than he wanted. That's where he just got to relax and to get the ball out to that break point a little bit wider. And here's Rachel Fields to pick up the spare here on lane seven. Just underway here, frame number one. And she just makes it. Didn't hurt it at all, but she got enough of it. Yes, she did. And here's the attempt for Dalton. Patrick makes his. So we're clean through one here as yeah. we start. Two singles pins first get ourselves started. Nobody uh, giving away the head pin yet. Gina Woodworth on the right lane leading off for Elkhart Memorial, and she leaves the 2-4-5. Little half bucket there. And here's Patrick Hubesman. And oh, he comes in high, but trips out the four pin for a strike. Playing pretty close to the line that I described. Probably a little tighter to the pocket than he won. Ladies after this half bucket here. And here's Gina Woodworth. And she takes just a five pin off. So an open frame start for Elkhart Memorial. All right, we're gonna have stepping up for Huntington will be Kylie, K, uh, K, uh, Kylie Kaiser. She goes across the head pin and leaves the five nine. Again, it's gonna be a frenetic pace here as Newcastle already up on the approach is Zach Reinberger, and he leaves just the four pin. Can you keep up with me, Doug? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just waiting to hey, interject when I can. We're, we're, we're just gonna go through the players and then we'll try to interject as much as we can here. And here's Kylie for the spare. Easily choppable, uh, two five there. And she misses, takes the nine pin off, and here stepping up for the spare is Zach Reinberger. Sorry, that was, was that the 5-9? I thought it was the 2-5. Was it the 2-5? I thought it was because she came okay. in line. All right. Feel free to correct me. We're kind of off at an angle here. Right. It's and weird to see the, especially uh, lane 7. Yes. Good single pin spare. Mm. A little slow on the ball speed there. Ball faced up real quick. Uh, these are very tricky. Here's Tyler Richardson. Three, six, seven, ten on the ladies' side. Tyler Richardson here for Jasper. His the first shot. He misses right and leaves the one, two, four. Up on the approach to pick up the spare is Taya Turner. And she just misses and leaves an open frame here in the second. So tough start here for Elkhart Memorial. Back-to-back -back opens. Good spare attempt right there. And Tyler Richardson picks up the spare. And quickly, Huntington is up on the approach as Elizabeth Manus bowling third. She comes in light, too, and now I know that's the 2 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, you're right, that is. All right, and Newcastle, Cole Owens here up on the approach. His first shot. Strike in the third. Most solid pocket shot we've seen so far in the finals. Yes, and already the boys are, they're, they're amped. They are, uh, yeah, it doesn't take much to amp them up. And Elizabeth Manis will try to convert the 2-5 spare. They're working on an open in the second. They're leading this match by 11, and she converts. And now quickly up for Jasper is Andrew Gadlidge. And he strikes. We got a good match going now. One pin lead for Jasper over here on the team side for boys. And quickly up on the right lane for the Elkhart Memorial. Another crossover shot. Is Trina Woodworth. Leaves herself uh, fairly easy. Easy single pin spare to attempt. 
all the coaches made the comments all about filling frames, making those single pin spares, make the easy spares. Never feel like your, uh, your opponent's gonna get an opening. And now up for Newcastle as the players are trying to get familiar with everything too as Wes Haltem. And if I remember right, last year at Anderson, Wes was in the singles finals. He comes, oh, he comes in light and trips a two pin for a double. That was a big break off the wall. Big rev player. And Trina converts the spare and Elkhart Memorial has their first mark in the competition. 11 pin lead for Huntington North. A 11 pin lead now for Newcastle and then cut it back. Oh, that came off the hand oh, badly. In the gutter. And that was Nolan Kiefer. That's all right, it doesn't hurt him, it's after a strike. He's just got to focus on getting the spare and now quickly up for Huntington is Bowler A, Alexis Aldred. Once we get all these names down, because we're, we're just getting familiar with players here, yeah, we're we'll, to we'll get this down the, a little bit. We're matching the letters on the back with the players. And another one that got off the hand badly. Yeah, and that was Daniel Miller. He's been bowling solid all day today for Newcastle. Sit, got oh, the spare. Nice spare. Great comeback to make the spare. There's no pin loss on that. Nice, nice comeback there for Nolan Kiefer. And we got an open frame for Huntington North as Alexis Aldred missed the spare. So this is going back and forth. And now up on the right lane is for Elkhart Memorial is Victoria Smith. Left-hander. She well. comes in high flush with the strike. Nice shot there from Victoria. And now quickly up for Jasper will be their anchor bowler, Alec Ernie. Yeah, good smooth roll out of Victoria. Let's see what the Jasper player can do. He comes in a little high, lucky just to leave the 6'10". Yeah, that had a big four written on it. Another, another shot that was a little bit tight. So we got the guys pulling it on occasion. We got the girls being a little bit light. And here now up on the left lane is Huntington North is their anchor bowler, Mackenzie Ferro. And she comes in high flush. Nice shot there from Mackenzie. Here comes the spare attempt for Daniel Miller, and he leaves the 4-7. So that changes the complexion of the match now. So 89 in the fifth now for Newcastle. A spare here from Jasper oh, will good. give them 78 in the fourth with a chance to take a nine-pin lead here. And a spare cover there for Jasper, and over on Lane eight is Elkhart Memorial. Their anchor bowler, Brooklyn, shot, uh, shoots. Threw a nice shot. Could have really uh, thrown a double there, really helping back in the match. She converts the 10 pin spare. Yeah, left, left that soft 10 pin. So here's Huntington North up. See if they can get a double. Rachel to go. Fields. And she leaves just the 6 pin. He comes in high, leaving the 3 6 10. And that is Patrick Dalton. And pace now is, the spare pace is very, very fast right yes. now. I'm not sure the players are giving themselves enough time at the foul line to, or uh, as they set up to really relax and make a good shot. Yeah, they're trying to get used to this format. We've never had where both teams on both sides have bowled at the same time. It is a, it's definitely something to get acclimated to as Patrick misses a spare in the sixth. And you hope, you know, we have meetings with the players and coaches to get them to understand how the pace of play is. And once you get used to it, it's not so bad. Right. We just got to alternate teams back and forth. And the thing is, you know, you can be you can be ready to jump up onto the approach, but once you're up there, you got to take your time to set up. You have to know that, you know, the approach is all yours and, and be ready to make a good shot. Just like that one. A strike there for Patrick Hubschman on And now Huntington, or Jasper takes the lead over Newcastle, and now Hunt Elkhart Memorial looking for the spare conversion here from Gina Woodworth, and she gets it. Just barely shakes out that seven pin. Quickly, let's... Uh, New let Newcastle with back-to-back -back opens now. They're in a little bit of trouble. All right, as the pace is frenetic, but Colin, uh, what do you think so far? This is just wild and crazy, isn't it? 
Well, you know, this is one of the great things about Baker Bowling is that even like Elkhart Memorial, they started a little bit slow, but you see the rest of the team's picking them up. They're keeping them right in it. So it really is a true team aspect. It's not about any one bowler, but all of them working together. So it's, it's fun to watch. Uh, Colin, do you feel like uh, players are trying to get acclimated to the double jump, so speak, rule that we're having here? And maybe that once they get used to that, you might see the pace of play be a little bit more smooth? Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. I think, you know, the, the lane courtesy and making sure they know who's up is, uh, is definitely on their mind. But more than anything, I think it's bowling on TV. It's, uh, it's that tension of, of trying to get the ball off the hand and, and loosen the arm swing up. So I think, I think as the next game starts up, they'll loosen up and you really see things open up in game two. All right, here's the spare attempt for Huntington North. That's Kylie Kaiser. Could she converts it. Another 2-5 out there. And here's Newcastle. Up on the left lane is Zach Reinberger. Nice spare there. He hit it exactly where he needed to, hit it high flush. He needed to put his first ball there. Yeah, not, a, not an easy spare conversion there at all. Honey, Elkhart Memorial, oh! Couldn't quite, in. couldn't quite clap that five pin into the seven. And that was Taya Turner for Elkhart Memorial. Coming in light, ooh, 2-10. There's Taya Turner's spare conversion for Elkhart Memorial and Tyler Richardson up here on the lane for Jasper trying to convert the 210 split. He's a little bit of hook out of it, not quite enough. Huntington North now, left lane, Elizabeth Manus. Ooh. That's an unusual hit. Ball was a little bit high, but had a bad break on the way the pins bounced off of each other. 7-9-10. Newcastle, and they come right back through the face. Well, that would have been critical Cole Owens. Uh, for Newcastle to step up and throw a good shot after Jasper's open. Well, they were just a 10-pin match there and a chance to take the lead with a mark in the eighth and or at least cut that lead down a little bit more maybe with a strike. But now an open frame here looking at it for Newcastle. Both the ladies and the gentlemen have very difficult spare attempts. And she takes just the nine-pin out and... Here's Cole Owens with his attempt at the 7-10, and he leaves both. And 124 now in the eighth frame for Newcastle. Jasper has 126 in the seventh. So a 10-pin lead and a chance to increase that lead even more. Oh, another split over here for Elkhart Memorial. Trina Woodworth. And you got to wonder, Doug, is nerves taking yeah, I think, effect here? I don't think the players have really settled down uh, to either the pace of the play or the, uh, obviously the gravity of the moment. Somewhere along the line, the coaches need to talk to them and just take them aside and say, yeah. let's, you know, let's ride, let's give ourselves a chance to make good shots. You gotta slide that over. Yeah, it takes the two. It's not a sprint. No, it's not. And uh, right now the play, pace of play is like that. Just a three pin match right now between Huntington North and Elkhart Memorial. Oh. And another open frame for Jasper. They have 134 in the eighth. A 10-pin lead over here for Jasper. A three-pin lead over here for Elkhart Memorial. And that's Alexis Aldridge coming in light, leaving the 2-4-5. And now up on the left lane is the fourth bowler for Newcastle, Wes Haltom. He comes in light, shreds the rack. Big shot there for Newcastle. Yeah, they really assert themselves when they go into that foundation frame. Jasper just did back-to-back -back opens. And a nice spare conversion over there for Alexis Aldred. She picks up the 245, and here is Jasper's Nolan Kiefer, or Kiefer. He comes in light, and he, he mixes him up. up. So that's a nice answer back to Newcastle strike. Lefty got another good shot there. Yes, Victoria Smith is on fire. That's two strikes for her in this competition. And now it's up to the anchor bowlers for both teams. Yeah, whoever, um, whoever can strike here can really assert themselves and really put a little bit of squeeze on the other team. All right, the anchor for Newcastle is Daniel Miller, but before he bowls, we'll go to the anchor bowler here for Huntington North, Mackenzie Faro. Again, three-pin match. Elkhart Memorial leading Huntington North, 10th frame. We've got a spare working. 2-4-5, and looks like Cole Owens is 
going to check the approach as he had a little bit of stickiness maybe on his first shot when yeah, he opened. He, um, yeah, that ball, um, he just hit the landing and he just, the ball lock came off of his hand. I believe he threw a three count or something or four count. And All right. Make sure you can finish solid, get through the back of the ball. This is a big shot with the strike working. Oh, that's the shot he won. Tie ball game now here between Jasper and Newcastle. 2 4 5 spare attempt for Mackenzie Perot here for Huntington North. They got to the have it. Yes, and she does. gets it. And now we're up to the anchor bowler for Jasper, Alec Ernie. They're working on a strike in the ninth. Newcastle just tied the game. Jasper looking to take a 10 pin lead here. First ball in the 10th frame. Pretty good shot. Oh. Good shot there. And now back to uh, Mackenzie Perot for Huntington North. They trail by six. She's going to finish out her 10th frame. And she gets an eight count. They finish with 149. Elkhart Memorial on a 157 pace. That's going to come in light. All right, the anchor bowler for Elkhart Memorial, Brooklyn shoots, shoots, she gets a nine count. And now here is Alec Ernie back for Huntington, or for Jasper. And here, needing the spare, and she gets it. It's not about just winning the match. It is about, you know, filling frames and getting as many pins ahead, because this yeah. is a total pin final. Yes, you want to just stay as close as you can if you don't have the lead. Okay, Cole gets one. They finish with 169. And here's the fill ball for Elkhart Memorial. And sh Brooklyn throws a strike, and it wasn't a Brooklyn strike. It was high flush. They finished nice with shot. 157. So and now. If, if you're the team that's behind right now, you have to realize, you know, it doesn't take much, you know, to take advantage. Uh, and maybe a mistake by your opponent. Neither one, one of these matches are over for sure. Nobody has gotten an enormous lead. Every, every match is very, very close. All right, we have a eight pin game and a 13-pin game. Let's send it lane side to Colin Kirchner. Hey guys, I don't know if the sound is translating in that booth how really rowdy it is. So I've wandered over here into the Jasper faithful. Hey guys, I guess they're telling me they can't hear Jasper on TV. <laughs> yeah, it's a little rowdier over here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, come on. That was so loud, my headset popped off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to get my Thanks, Colin. Check now. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy, Colin. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't know if we broke anything. <laughs> On your drum. <laughs> That's probably about it. All right. So now here, let's, let's give you the uh, scores here. Elkhart Memorial leads Huntington North 157 to 149. Jasper Boys lead the Newcastle Boys 182 to 169. So... We need to make sure the girls start on the left lane. So Elkhart Memorial will start this match off. And then Jasper will start the boys match off. So here we go. I think we're gonna probably have the same line if I would guess. So here's Elkhart Memorial. Here's Gina Woodworth on the left lane. And my ears are still ringing. <laughs> And Gina comes in a little high and leaves the 3-6. And now here is Patrick Hubschman for Jasper. And Whoa, he comes in like, Yeah, and, and really advantage them because they have a 13-pin lead. Right. Yeah, now it's just a matter of, of just throwing enough quality shots to never give your opponent that opening. And if you stay loose, you know, the pins are going to fall. And here's a spare attempt for Gina. Uh-oh. Oh, and she chops the six off the three. Open frame start for Elkhart Memorial. Now remember, 
Doug. They opened the first two frames. And they came back. Nice and they, yes. I think they may even Oh, a <laughs> lucky break there for Huntington North. Oh, and that was Rachel Fields. And now here's Newcastle Boys. There you go. That's the first shot he's thrown tonight. That has actually gotten the ball down the lane. He actually stayed behind it, got it to the break point. Good things happen when you do that. And that's Patrick Dalton. And there's a strike for Hunting or Elkhart Memorial, Taya Turner. And now quickly, Jasper is Tyler Richardson left lane. Working on a strike. There's the double. Quickly, we go right back over to Huntington North. And that is Kylie Kaiser, and she comes in high for a split. And quickly back is the Newcastle boys. And you don't see that very often. The one, two, no, that, three, uh, four. Yeah, he, um, he got that off the hand really quick. He got two wide open. And ball just slipped off his hand. Hit the six pin very, very thin. Really tough attempt here on, on the lady side. And Kaiser, Kylie uh, gets two pins, gets the count. Good play there. Two means four in that situation. And another open frame now for Newcastle. Zach Reinberger. And now quickly up for Elkhart Memorial Didn't is Trina shot. Woodworth. Yeah. Double for Elkhart Memorial, and they increase their lead now even more. Back to back plus strikes. Jasper trying to take the shot, uh, assert itself a little bit there. Got a little bit loose. That was Andrew Gadledge. And there's just no, it doesn't seem like there's any out, so to speak, that we're seeing right now. No, if you miss the release a little bit, you get the shoulders a little out of line. It's just going to sail on you. You might touch the head pin, but more likely you'll leave something like that. Elizabeth Manus for Huntington North comes in light and leaves the washout. And well, now. That's where I thought the players would be a little bit deeper than they are, especially the guys, where they wouldn't be giving away the pocket too much. And Cole Owens, he comes in light, fortunate just to leave the two pin. So frenetic pace here. We got three conversions here we're waiting on for players to try to make. And first we'll go Huntington North. Oh, and it wraps right around that's the 10. A that's a bad break for, break for Elizabeth Manus. Man, that's a heartbreaker when you get that close and you just wrap the headpin around the 10. That's a great attempt at that watch out. And here's Andrew Gadledge. Oh, and he comes way right and misses the spare. So now Cole Owens, he really needs to focus and make this. Yeah, because that, that open will pretty much negate Jasper's double they started with. So this spare here, whoops. Oh, he misses. And Trina Woodworth just struck again for the third time in three shots to, to throw a three-bagger, and they take a commanding lead over Huntington North. Yeah. They're throwing great shots now. Elkhart's throwing really good shots. So Jasper caught a break there. Alexis Aldred throws a strike for Huntington North, and leaving just the head pin now here for Jasper is their fourth bowler, Nolan, Nolan Kite, uh, Keeper. And now we see an errant shot here for Elkhart Memorial. And boy, there's a five count, which really hurts your pin count. Yeah, after a three-bagger. Um, that was Victoria Smith. Just another one where you just leaked it out there a little bit. That's a good spare. All right, Mr. Kiefer makes the spare for Jasper. So that would have been a good opportunity after that uh, open for Newcastle to step up. Didn't quite convert the single pin spare. 20 pin lead for Jasper here after three. And remember, they have a 13 pin lead after game one. So a 33 pin lead for Jasper over Newcastle. And here's Haltom, and he comes in with the light wash. with a washout. So trouble now here for Newcastle. A double now for Huntington North. That was Mackenzie Ferro, their anchor bowler. Huge shot for them as right after Elkhart Memorial opens in the fifth. Yeah, that uh, gives Elkhart something to think about now. Jasper's anchor Alec Ernie throws a high flush strike. And again, it's just right back and forth. We almost can't keep up. No, it's, it's tough to focus on, but Elkhart needs to get something going here soon. Throwing yeah. a couple of errant shots, and now Huntington is throwing a double at him. Now Gina Woodworth comes in high, and oh, halt him. Nice cover there by Wes. And right now, that just kind of keeps them in the match. He had to make that. Right. 
now that what they have to open now is uh, somebody's got to get lined up, get a double here, and they've got to hope that Jasper has another open frame. They didn't take advantage of the last open frame Jasper had. Good spare out of Elkhart. Yes. Now here's Jasper working on a strike. Oh, high flush there from Patrick Huchman, their leadoff. And now they have a double, and they take a sizable lead in this match. Yep. Now it's critical that Newcastle find a line and start striking. Rachel Fields now up for Huntington North. And she throws a strike. They've got a three-bagger, Doug. Yep. They're right back in it. They're right back in it. They're going to do the same thing that Elkhart did last time. Um, and here's Daniel Miller. Bold so good roll, all roll. day today. He comes in and misses a head pin right. And it's real unfortunate because Daniel bowled so well. He was, I think, shot 230, 240 in both his games. Really carried his team into mm -hmm. the uh, state final championship match here. Well, you know, that's why it's a team event. You know, you got to get all the players dialed in. You know, sometimes you can ride the, ride the horse, but uh, right now all the ponies have got to be running. Well, and right now, Taya Turner just came in light and left the 4-5-7 split and Cole excuse me uh, Daniel Miller makes the spare for Newcastle they got to start striking to get back in this match here's a big spare attempt for Elkhart Memorial and she misses it Good attempt and there. that's a very unusual spare to shoot after four five seven well Jasper here can really set a tone here uh -oh. oh Tyler Richardson comes in light leaving a washout not only does he leave a washout, which is a difficult spare, but he loses pin count on the six count first that's ball. A, that's the second opportunity Jasper has given to Newcastle. Newcastle needs to step up and take advantage of those mistakes. Oh my, Kylie Kaiser with the Brooklyn strike four bagger now for Huntington North, and they have taken the lead. Yeah, they were. Two out of three opens after the early strikes for Elkhart. Patrick Dalton leads the 3-9. Spare attempt for Jasper comes up short. And now needing to make a spare here is Patrick Dalton to keep Newcastle's hopes alive. And the always un unpleasant to shoot out double wood. And now Tr Trina Woodworth, she comes in light, leaving the one two. And really right now the tide has turned in the girls match. Nice spare conversion there by Patrick. He's needing his team to get fired up and throw some strikes. And Elkhart Memorial is in big trouble right now. Trina needs to make this spare. And she does. And Ooh, she gets it. There you go. Now stepping up on the left lane for Jasper is Hunter Richardson working on an open eight frame. He comes in light. He's hoping for it to roll out, didn't quite get it. Well, Jasper made a switch there. Player switch as he came in for Andrew Gadledge and another strike for Huntington North. They are, uh, they just dialed it in. And a strike there for Newcastle as Zach Reinberger with the strike in the seventh. And then Huntington took advantage. They got a good break with the crossover strike, and they came back with a great shot and took control of this match. Another strike for Victoria Smith, who's perfect in both games. 137 in the eighth, and right now they are in trouble. They needed that strike from Victoria. Good spare there from Hunter Richardson. So that's really all Jasper needs to do right now is, is just fill frames, and Newcastle won't catch him. As long it, as they don't make another mistake. It's a 50-pin lead right now in this oh, match for Huntington North. And right there about seals the deal. Oh, yeah. You got a six-bagger out there. And that was Alexis Aldred striking in the ninth. And they have blown that match wide open. Well, that's the excitement of team player. You get one player going, you get another player going, and suddenly everybody's finding a look. And you can put up a really big number. And Cole Owens comes in high, leaving the 310. And in the fifth or tenth frame now is their anchor bowler Brooklyn shoots, shoots and uh, she comes in light and coming in way light for Jasper is Nolan Kiefer on the left lane. Newcastle really in big they have to make this spare. 
and he could have went ahead and he could have gone ahead and hopefully yeah, that doesn't disturb his play there. He could have went ahead and went. It would have been no big deal. Yeah, I mean we're talking about five lanes of separation, four lanes of separation. Yeah. It's not that yeah, it's not that big a deal. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can. This is almost a pace we can't keep up with, well, but yeah, the the action is exciting and we're trying to do the best we can here. And we don't want to we don't want to take the players out of their rhythm, especially in the bowling well. Nice spare there from Nolan in the ninth. And here is the anchor bowl again for Elkhart. Brooklyn shoot, shoots and she leaves a seven count. And a nice baby split conversion there by Cole Owens in the eighth. Newcastle, the best Newcastle, if they go off the sheet, it looks like 188 is the best they can do. 128 plus 60. Well, we know one thing right now. Huntington North is your girl state champ team champion. Yeah, six in a row right there in Baker format. Elkhart, 174 is a very respectable Baker game. They just ran to the buzzsaw here. Just a five pin there. It's going to be an outstanding game. They're looking to be in the 220s if she converts this pair. 331 two game total for Elkhart Memorial. And here is Jasper's Alec Ernie. Another baby split. 310 split. They can shoot. If he misses this, 168. Now, Newcastle will shoot 188. Yeah, Newcastle this is still. Out. Yeah, this game is still. This he, game is far from over. Yeah, if Jasper misses um, and they, and Newcastle doubles in the ninth and tenth, they will make up that 13 pin difference. So the boys' match is not over. This is when you rely on number four and number five. You put your best two out there. This is a must strike for Wes. That's going to go Brooklyn. Got it. Oh, and he got it. Wes Halton with the Brooklyn strike here. And this match is far from over. Now Daniel Miller, their anchor bowler, he's thinking, just give me a shot. But right now, Alec Ernie can end that with a spare conversion here on the 310. So it's all down to Alec Ernie here. It's in Jasper's hands. Now this is a, not an easy spare attempt. There's no getting it for sure. And now Huntington North anchor bowler, Mackenzie Farrow. She strikes 226 total. What a comeback by Huntington North girls. Just a beautiful finish there. Here's Alec Ernie. Roll it up. Oh, oh and he much. misses. 169, if they strike out for 188, that will be a 19 pin difference and they're 13 pins behind. So they can strike out and win the total by just a handful of pins. They shot 351. So they need to shoot 183 or better to win the state championship. It's all down to Daniel Miller here for Newcastle. They need the first two. He has bowled so well all day long. It's in his hands. He needs a strike here. It's a pretty good line. Oh, and he gets it. My, oh my. A phenomenal shot in that situation. Boy, as Bill Raftery would say, onions <laughs> on basketball because there's some different type of blood in those veins and it's yep. like ice water. That was sweet. Well, here it is. He must strike. He must strike to give his team a chance. That first shot was a beautiful shot off the hand. We have one championship already decided, Huntington North girls. Will it be Newcastle or Jasper? He's got a chance. Oh, oh my, it looked like the seven pin was going to fall and your boys, state team champion are the Jasper boys from Jasper High School on a tough, tough break there from Daniel Miller. Five pin wouldn't slide over, the pin came off the wall and shifted that, that seven pin is actually off spot a little bit. It actually moved it and shook it and it wouldn't fall. I thought he was going to get the Weber wall shot it was great off his hand, Doug. It really was. Great bowling there by Daniel shots. Miller. Two great shots. Great, in the frame to great the team a chance. Uh, steen there of sportsmanship by Jasper. As what a shot by Daniel Miller. But we have our state championship determined here. For the girls' side, it's the Huntington North girls. For the boys, it's Jasper High School. We're going to do the awards presentation, but quickly, let's kick it lane side to Colin and get his perspective. Colin, what'd you think? What a shot by Daniel, tough break. Oh man, I mean, he really just, you saw him take his time, you saw the team get behind him, and, and you really can't do anything more than that. He executed, hit the spot, let go. The rest is just up to fate and what's gonna happen. So, you know, hearts out to him. 
great shot, great bowling all day, and, uh, and a great win for Jasper and a great showing for Newcastle. All right, let's get your team totals quickly, and then we'll send it back to Colin Laneside for the awards presentation. But a three-pin difference, I believe. Yeah, Jasper defeats the boys 351 to 345. And uh, Huntington North girls come back strong with a huge 226 game. They defeat the Elkhart Memorial girls 375 to 331. I believe we're ready for our awards presentation. Let's send it back to Colin Kirshner, Lane side, for our awards presentation. How about that bowling, everybody, huh? Was that not fun? <laughs> Let's bring up our uh, runner-up first. We'll start with our girls' side. Our second place finalist from the Michiana Central Conference, Elkhart Memorial. Come on up, great bowling, girls. And on my right, we'll bring up the boys' side, our runner-up from the Mid-Indiana Conference, Newcastle. <laughs> we got just a minute here while they're getting these awards out and some photos taken, but uh, a lot of sad faces on the lanes, but none of these guys have anything to be sad about. Finishing second, we have over 200 schools in the Indiana Bowling Program, so so really great showing for both these schools to come out here and do this. Well, and, and, and like you said, Colin, you know, only a handful of teams make it this far to even the state championship, and then to make it all the way out of qualifying and then your semifinal and quarterfinal matches to make it to the state title game, nothing to be ashamed of. I, I totally agree with you. And they're all three respectable games, too. I mean, everybody bowled well. All right, they're going to escort the runner-up teams off so they can get photos taken with their parents and fans. And, and both, both, all four teams had a great showing of family support and community support. And that's what makes... Uh, the state championship so special is is the camaraderie and and uh, all the parents and families getting together to uh, to spend a, a weekend together in competition. Oh, yeah, to be a player to be able to step up and know that you have so much support behind you and that every shot you know everybody is, is for it. You know it's really it's a great way to bowl. It's just a great atmosphere to be in. Well, let's not waste any more time, Colin. Take it away for the title championship presentation. All right, it's time to meet our new 2016 Indiana High School Bowl State Bowling Champs. First, our girls from the Hoosier Conference, Huntington North. <laughs> and your boys state champs from the Blue Chip South Conference, Jasper. <laughs> Well, that was a popular win, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> a lot of support in the background there. A uh, great, uh, great crowd here from Jasper and both Newcastle. And, uh, of course, Colin, uh, earlier, you uh, were nice enough to go down to Jasper and uh, I'll let them scream and yell in the microphone. We thank you for that. I just wanted to make sure you guys could hear them. <laughs> well, yeah, I still can't hear. <laughs> I'll say can't hear them anymore. <laughs> I kept thinking Doug's phone's been ringing all afternoon. It's, <laughs> it's been my ears. <laughs> oh, but anyway, uh, great, great evening and day of bowling and uh, you know exciting matches in the singles competition uh, we had games that came down to the final frame our boys state title game comes right down to the 11th frame and uh, unfortunately for Daniel Miller and, and Newcastle uh, it looked like the seven pin was falling and and, and gravity would not take it down you no, know and it just wasn't meant to be and Jasper came away with the victory you know one thing that I take away from this and Colin I'm sure you will too is uh, and and it, it just sat with me was uh, Patrick Huchman, the leadoff bowler for uh, Jasper, uh, really at the end conclusion after Daniel Miller's second shot didn't fall, he went up and hugged him right away. And, and that's what makes competition so special is sportsmanship too as well. 
Yeah, you know, that, that's really what Indian high school bowling is about, is these guys uh, holding each other up, whether they're on the same team or they're bowling against each other for the state finals, they're still there to support each other and congratulate each other. And, and I mean, you can't ask for more than that. These are all great kids and great competitors, and it's just an honor to be a part of it. Why don't you sneak down there and see if we can't get a word with uh, Jasper's head coach and the players after they get their pictures taken. I'd love to hear what both coaches from each team have to say on their victory this afternoon. And we'll give Colin a few minutes to get down there, and we'll send it his way when he gets there. And uh, Doug, wow, you know. Great day uh, of bowling. Yeah, I'll I, be honest with you, I'm, I can't, I, it was just so fast. We tried the best we can, and we hope that uh, the folks watching the broadcast enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, but, wow, uh, it was a great day and, and a lot of great action. Yeah, we had, uh, I mean, I said, we had a lot of quality shots and intense moments. Um, we had a lot of team camaraderie. We had a lot of very, very close matches. And it's all about, you know, just uh, that, that whole competitive intensity that everybody, you know, gets behind, whether it's, you know, just your teams and all your parents and friends behind you. So we had a really great atmosphere all day long. Well, and uh, really, uh, I mean, the dramatic finish for the boys, but then you had the Huntington North girls all of a sudden just turned it on and what had like a six-bagger there, yep. uh, if I'm looking at, yeah, and uh, really took a, 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 a Elkhart Memorial lead because they go with a three-bagger. And then you thought, well, Elkhart Memorial, who had the lead after the first game by eight, you thought, well, this game is in big trouble for Huntington North. Well, and, and then six bagger, well, and it was over. That's the thing about you know the Bakers. Um, it's really hard to get everybody lined up, and as soon as you get a, a hole or two, and if you can get somebody else on your team, you know, sort of taking that lead um, and and inspiring the rest of the team, suddenly you string together, and you can make up a, a lot of pins in a hurry. All right, uh, looks like Colin's going to sneak into the Jasper I, huddle. I, Take it away, Colin. I don't know if I dare hop in here, but guys, right down to the last shot. What an awesome performance. Tell me, what's going through your mind while you're watching them up there throwing that 10th frame? Uh, I, the words just can't explain it. I'm just so excited. It's awesome. Well, congratulations to you guys. It's really awesome to see you win and all this fan support. Enjoy it. Well, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next year. All right, Colin, let's see if we can't sneak in real quick with the Elkhart Memorial girls and Coach James Farrell and his players and uh, as they're getting congratulated by parents and, and community support. And All right, I'm going I'm to sneak in here. i got to ask you guys. All right, got to ask you guys. I'm sneaking in. Okay, hey, what got into you guys? All of a sudden throwing what, five, six strikes in a row there to finish the last game. What was that all about? To win. <laughs> to win. <laughs> Well, to run the table from the four seed all the way to the championship's got to feel good, huh? For sure. Right, well, congratulations, and uh, see you next year, right? All right, back to you guys. All right, well, you know, it's hard to get a lot of, uh, of information from a player after they've just won. The excitement and everything is yeah, there. Everybody gets and a little tongue-tied there, and they're just so caught up in the, in the yeah, moment. Yeah, and, and it's probably not real easy when somebody sticks a microphone in your face after you just had two grueling games to come back to win a state championship. And... Uh, Doug, it's been a pleasure um, to you bring you this. You and, uh, I mean, wow. Uh, I don't think you could ask for anything more in a broadcast with all the dramatic finishes and close matches in the singles for both boys and girls and team for both boys and girls. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to watch these young athletes perform. Well, yeah, I think uh, you know, the fans who are going to watch the telecast in the future, I think they're going to be really pleased with the, the quality of, of the athleticism, the, of the sh uh, shot making how close the matches were. I think overall it's just been an outstanding day of bowling. Well, it's been a long day. We've been here since early this morning uh, to get set up here um, and uh, bring you this state championship action. Um, once again, uh, in team portion, uh, the Jasper boys defeat uh, the Newcastle High School boys 351 to 345 in dramatic fashion, and Huntington North defeats Elkhart Memorial, 375 for th and to 331. I want to thank Scott Savage, uh, our cameraman, helping us out, bringing you uh, all the action here this afternoon. Chad Lester, our uh, director and producer. And also want to thank you, Doug, for uh, bringing all of your insight. And uh, before we go off the air, uh, uh, author as well, you know, I'll give you a cheap plug for your book. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, the second edition came out uh, September 1st. Uh, the first edition of Steps of Success by Human Kinetics sold over 19,000 copies. And we changed the format completely. It's all color photographs. We got rid of the line drawings. Um, we, we got rid of some of, the, um, some of the mental aspects of the game and really emphasized more of the physical aspects again. Um, and 
across the board, people are really liking the layout. So I, I'm waiting to, I've got some good feedback from the president of the company about a month after it came out, so I'm waiting for more good feedback about uh, that. All right, Colin, we're gonna send it down to you. Final thoughts here before we take off? Oh man, there are all kinds of emotions down here. I'm seeing a lot of tears, uh, most of them joyful. Uh, a couple sad ones, but that's uh, all part of the competition. It's just been a real honor doing this with you guys. I, I appreciate everything you do, and, uh, and again, hopefully we'll do this again next year. All right, next year we'll take place in Fort Wayne at Pro Bowl West, and uh, Savage Bowling TV hopes to bring you that action to uh, next year. For Scott Savage, Chad Lester, Doug Weedman, and Colin Kirshner, Laneside, I'm Scott Gilmore. Thanks again for watching the 2016 Indiana High School Bowling State Finals here from Mike Albee's Arrowhead Bowl in Lafayette. We'll see you next year at Pro Bowl West in Fort Wayne. So long, everyone.